everybody. I want you to do something with me really quick. I want you to all think in your head. Remember the time, because I know every single one of you in, in here have done this, when you're procrastinating doing homework. And you're procrastinating by listening to music on YouTube. Now, you know when you're looking at YouTube and you are watching a video, there's related videos on the right-hand side of the screen. I want you to imagine that you're listening to some random song and you see a little picture on the right-hand side that looks pretty familiar. So you click on it. And what you see is something that will change your entire life. Imagine if you clicked on the video and you realize that somebody posted a video of you and labeled it the world's ugliest woman or man. Think for a second. How would you feel? How do you think somebody would feel if they found that? I'll tell you, because it happened to me. And the moment I found this video, I was voiced, I was given two options. I could either choose happiness or I could choose to give up. Now being in this situation isn't something that's new to me because I was born with a very, very rare syndrome. There's only three people, including myself, that we know of that have this syndrome. I'm 24 years old. I've never weighed over 62 pounds my entire life. I literally could eat whatever I want, whenever I want, and not gain weight. Now, it might sound pretty amazing. It is, just, just be honest. <laughs> but I am so small, and I look very different from other people. So as you can imagine, when people see me and they've never heard my story, they don't know who I am, they know nothing about me, they see me and they think, What's wrong with that girl? What eating disorder does she have? Why is she so skinny? From the second I was born, the doctors prepared my parents to expect absolutely nothing out of me. They said I wouldn't come out crying. They said I would never talk, I would never walk, I would never crawl. I would literally accomplish nothing in my life. And my parents said, you know what? We're gonna take her home. We're gonna love her and we're gonna raise her as best as we can. So that's exactly what they did. They raised me completely normally. I was a cute kid, I'm not gonna lie. I was so small that my parents had to go to Toys R Us to buy me doll clothes because regular baby clothes were way too big on me. If you go like this, that's the size I was when I was a baby. I personally don't remember, but that's what my parents told me. I grew up completely normally. So normally to the point that when I started kindergarten, I had no clue that I was different. I couldn't physically see that I looked different from the other kids. I unfortunately had to find out in a way that I like to think of as a big slap of reality for a five-year-old. I'm sure you guys know the feeling the night before the first day of school and you're super excited. You have that like anxious feeling in your stomach because you don't know who's gonna be in your class or you're gonna make friends. That's what I felt. I had my full on his lunchbox, my matching bow, my ruffled socks, ready to go. I walked in on the first day and I saw a little girl reading a book. I walked up to her and I smiled at her and she looked up at me like I was the scariest thing she'd ever seen. And my first thought was, she's rude. I'm a fun kid, she's missing out. So I let it go and the rest of the day, unfortunately, it didn't get any better. No one wanted to play with me, no one wanted to stand by me. No one wanted to have a single thing to do with me because I was different. And again, I couldn't understand because I was raised so normally. And so going to the playground was hard. I remember climbing up to the top of the playscape, wanting to go down the slide, but there was a long line. And as soon as I got up there, everybody moved. And you would think, yeah, VIP to the slide. But they were moving because they were scared of me. So that's when I had to go home and ask my parents, what's wrong with me? Why doesn't anyone like me? I'm just like them. 
And my parents encourage me to go back to school, be myself, and eventually they'll see that I'm just like them. And that's exactly what I did. So again, at such a young age, I was forced to be in the situation of, I could either choose to be happy, or I could choose to give up. Luckily, I chose to be happy. As I grew up, I started making a lot of friends. I, I'm pretty funny, so I made a lot of friends really easily. And once I started making friends, my friends started becoming my bodyguards, per se. When people would come up to me and kind of tease me and make fun of me, which happened often, they would come up and say, this is my friend Lizzie, you know, be nice to her, she's pretty cool. And luckily it worked. As I got older, I of course had to deal with a lot of bullying. Luckily, no physical bullying, but a lot of name calling and stares. And so I felt self-conscious a lot, even though I was so young, because I didn't look like the popular girls. But I again continued to be myself. Through middle school, I did cheerleading. I was a flyer, you could have seen how high I went up in the air. I realized that I was a people person. I loved being around people. I loved talking to people, meeting new people. So I joined every organization that I could think of. High school cheerleading, yearbook staff, newspaper, theater, I hate acting. I won an award in a play. I was doing all of these things and once I got to high school, I was at a very high point and I felt really good about myself. Until the day I found the YouTube video. This video is eight seconds long. It had no sound. It had over four million views to this one video that was eight seconds long. I scrolled down and there were thousands of comments on it telling me I should kill myself. If people see my face, they would go blind. So I thought those people, how could they? They don't know me. They know absolutely nothing about me. So again, I was put in the position choosing happiness or to choose to give up. And in that moment, I didn't want those people to define who I was as a person. I wanted to tell them off, I did. But I told myself, Lizzie, you're gonna prove to these people that they're not gonna win and they're not gonna hold you down. So at this point, I'm deciding how am I gonna get my revenge? What am I gonna do? I'm a very goal-oriented person, so I decided to set four goals for myself. I decided I was going to be a motivational speaker, I was going to write a book, I was going to graduate college, and I was going to have my own family and my own career. I made these goals when I was probably a sophomore beginning of junior year. 2013 will be my eighth year of motivational speaking. <laughs> I told myself I wanted to write a book. I never thought I'd be like on Harry Potter, Twilight level, but I knew I wanted to write a book. My first year of college, I published my first book called Lizzie Beautiful in English and Spanish. I never thought it would happen, but I ended up writing my second book and it came out this past October called Be Beautiful, Be You. A couple of days ago, I got an email from my publishing house with a release date for my third book. I told myself I wanted to graduate college, and this May I will be getting my degree from Texas State University. My fourth goal is to have my own family and my own career, the family part down the line. I'm only 24. The career part, I feel like I've gotten a good jump on it. And so now I'm faced with what's next? What am I gonna do? One of the biggest motivations for me to accomplish all those things was that YouTube video. Every time I was sad, every time I doubted myself, you may think this sounds kind of crazy and you're thinking why, I would go back to that video and I would look at every comment, every hateful comment and it was fuel to my fire to keep going. Every nasty comment made me want to work even harder, even harder. It's kind of funny timing because my mom said, well, your goals are pretty much gonna be all done. What are you gonna do now? Are you gonna take a rest? And I said, no, are you kidding? Why would I waste my time? My next goals are gonna be even bigger. But that bad video was finally taken down. 
so I thought, great, things are looking up. Life is pretty good. This past Sunday, as I was preparing for this speech, I started getting a lot of Twitter notifications. And when that happens, my heart sinks because I never know if it's something bad. Unfortunately, it was something bad. Somebody else posted another bad video of me. This person had over a million subscribers to his channel. He, had, he Googled my name in his video, had horrifying music playing when the search came up, and all of his subscribers started Googling me and sending me really hateful things. My dad's always told us you could have your one good cry and then you have to pick your chin up, smile, and move on to the positive. I had my one good cry, I smiled, and I said, what great accomplishment is this video gonna lead to? I told myself, Lizzie, you're gonna show these people that they're not gonna define you. I'm not gonna let the people who stare at me, the people who call me ugly, the doctors who said I would never accomplish a thing, they're not gonna find me, they're not gonna define me and they're not gonna win. I kind of look at this whole battle of the world's ugliest woman versus me. And I realized the best revenge is with your accomplishments. So yes, I won. Thank you. Thank you.